Hello everybody, my name is Anton. Welcome back to Let's Play Hearts Fire for the New Order as Iberia. Let us continue on from the last that's off. I will also move these troops to this front because Andorra just happens to be in the way. The Asphalt Mixture. The planning phase for the new infrastructure project has again halted at an early point in the resource stage due to the dispute that begun after a rather sharp Portuguese civil servants noticed divergent Portuguese and Spanish material regulations on asphalt mixtures. There is a possibility that this may ruin the road if further work continues without any intervention. Considering that this will be a coordinated effort between both union members, it is important for propaganda reasons that this is done right. Then again, it is only a road. The bigger projects on the horizon afterwards uh, will be far better at helping stabilize Iberian unity. How should we proceed on the issue? Appeal for fe uh, federal laws and road construction material. I mean, the whole country should probably use the same type of, like, roads. I mean, it makes sense to me. Two naval bases. Stability for a puppet state in Algeria. You know what? Let, let's, let's see what Algeria's up to. Because you're a puppet state. You have, three you have four divisions, actually, by default. Three civilian factories. Do you have any natural resources? You guys have 49 steel, which is not bad. We're actually missing some rubber. We'll get that from Ceylon. And we'll get some chromium from South Africa. That seems okay. Because we don't support any of these German colonies, right? Like, if a war happens in South Africa, which it will, uh, we probably see want to back the South Africans against, um, against these guys. Of course, they'll actually, they won't go to war until Hitler is dead, I believe. I don't think they can go to war earlier than that. What are you? Apparently you're an observer state of... The Pact? You're all in the cross prosperity sphere. You're also an observer of the Pact. It, it's fine. Don't worry about it. 1500 manpower, but that's mostly for... That's for our puppet state, which I, again, doesn't like... Matters so much, I believe at least. I might be wrong. The current consumption rates will run out of fuel in eight months. Okay, so that's not great. I will, I'll admit that. By the way, how, where are our planes? Let's throw them all in Madrid, honestly. They don't, they don't really need to be everywhere. At least for right now. I mean, how many planes do we have? 350 planes, we have 36 ships, so I mean our air, like our army, air force, all that, isn't like incredible. And the question of repairs. While the asphalt mixture problem resolved and the investigation underway, we've been given a go-ahead to start our project. State sanctioned contractors are beginning to arrive in droves, already making great progress, as we begin to tear out defunct infrastructure to implement the new great works. Both foreign and domestic journalists gasp, gasp in awe. When they are when they get their allotted time to visit the construction sites. A process requiring a great deal of effort and delay on our part is everything, as everything has to be prepared according to in advance. On what such visit, everything changed, however. Time coming to a freezing halt as a blood curling scream tears down the perfect visage we created. An explosion of asphalt ruptures and now trembling earth, exposing cracks within the hardy setting concrete. So as the road cratered in uh, created in after tons of dynamite were preemptively detonated in the foundations of the interchange, reducing days of toil into rubble and ash. Large stockpiles of resources and machinery were, are lost in the horrific mess. Emergency services were deployed within minutes, leading to wounds, attending to wounds and attempting to pull gasping, bloodied hands out of the charred piles of ruin. We have confirmed four deaths and over 300 workers injured, adding costly medical bills to the already colossal repairs that we need, uh, that we need to immediately address. After the cry of Betanjari, who was reported by the chaos, we have strong evidence supporting that the notion that boss separatists belonging to socialist organizations are directly responsible for the attacks based on reports of similar terrorist activities that have plagued other government-sponsored public works. The SECD has begun to investigate our, uh, to address our suspicions, but in the meantime, we need to figure out how to amend or adjust our budget to deal with the shortfall. We can ask for tax money, or we, you know, let's just ask for tax money. Let's not cut corners, because that seems like it could lead to a, uh, a problem. The Knights of Malta. What if something hap does happen? What then? Concerned cross Amirko Thomas's face. Nothing is going to happen. We'll be fine. The conference had been planned months in advance to bring the leaders of the three great nations of the Mediterranean to one table. Who was Americano to doubt its security? 
Franco could be terribly offensive at times, but this, this was just stupid. It would be the first time in Abira's history that the two Kalidos simultaneously left the peninsula. Thomas tried to hide his annoyance. My Kalido, with all due respect, you are a mortal man. And even if the chance of anything going wrong is slim, all Iberia could be destroyed if something does. We are sending bodyguards with you and they remain with you at all times, and the same goes for Cadillo Sazier. Look, I don't want some... some ass... excuse me. I don't want anybody watching me uh, while I'm goddamn sleeping. It's only for your protection, sir. Sure, why not? Try not to explode. I mean, you're still upset, but like, what, what can I do about that? We can, keep, we can just keep throwing money at it. I mean, we have a lot of money, to be fair. 194 million. Is that counted in this budget? I think we're actually making more money now. More sure spending other expenditures. It might be other expenditures that might be counted under. I'm not too sure. Iberia denies funding. The federal Iberian government has denied more funding to road building, stating that the project has been giving more than enough funding to ensure its completion. This comes despite their extensive knowledge of the disaster as a bombing attack. We must seek alternative sources of funding. Now we're at negative six political power. Beautiful. Dunes and doom. Sand dunes have a bad habit of burying things. The roads crossing the Moroccan and Algerian desert constantly must be maintained, carefully monitored for any signs of sandfall. Just about the only thing more difficult than maintaining desert roads is laying them down. Pablo and his fellow surveyors lay down steel markers as they plotted the course for the new road. Officially, this was to promote uh, regional commerce. In truth, this was to give the Portuguese settlers a faster and safer way to Ill illegally enter Algeria as they move further east. Paolo noticed the um, okay. Paolo noticed the most unusual rock. There are many large rocks out there, but this one was much flatter than the others, and ever so slightly green tinted color. And was that rust? Was that cracked glass? That's not a rock, Pablo said. Oh my god, that's not a rock. As Pablo approached the truck, near completely buried in a stand, he started to think what he might see inside. Hand shaking, he brushed away the dust to that obscured the window. There he found bodies. Sickly brown tissue clung tightly to dust covered bones. Empty eye sockets and teeth almost forming smiles brought this quietly, humanly. Um. Okay. And almost forming smiles brought this quietly humanity to the emaciated house before him. They were holding hands when they died. Husband and wife surely on the floor of the passenger sheep rested in a smaller corpse. Its skull was dis uh, disoriented from its torso, wearing a tattered remnant of a baby clothes. Who's to say what doomed this family to die here? A flat tire, an empty fuel tank, and a failed ignition? There are many ways to get lost out here, but no way to call for help. Well, that's, that's depressing. Uh, let's then go for... We'll get more ration cards. Seem decent enough. The Mighty Whale. Francisco, Francisco Franco's magnificent 47-meter yacht cruised through the Atlantic waters. This was a vacation of sorts. A few days to spend away from the governing before the Malta Conference. No trip out to sea, thought Franco, would be complete without a great catch to, uh, summer, to commemorate the voyage. The Bay of Biscay had long been hunting ground for whalers. Its deep undersea uh, canyons proved to be a home for deep divers. Where fertile reefs provided for a shallow sea whales, and Franco would keep searching the bay until he found one. Hours passed, and the sky turned orange as the sun neared the horizon. The wind was still, and the water cleared. Droplets of water sprayed in the distance, but that was for a few seconds. The back of an enormous sperm whale rose above the surface. Enrica maximum power! As the yacht turned towards the beast, its motors roared to life and raced forwards. Rapid clicks, each as loud as a shotgun blast, had most sailors covering their ears, not Franco. As he insisted, he would operate the harpoon, and he would not allow size, speed, or sound to stop him. He raised the weapons, now just a matter of aiming. Good. She does not expect a thing, just hold still. Boom! The explosive attached to the harpoon detonates, blasting water and chunks of flesh into the air, and turning the surrounding water red. The whale thrashed around, but it only worsened the bleeding. Franco now joined his men at the ropes, dragging the monster aboard, as it made its final feeble movements. 10 meters long and God only knows how many tons. So we just shot a massive harpoon through a whale. Fantastic. Not for the whale. I feel like the whale's probably slightly upset by uh, that development. But, you know, it is what it is. By the way, does Burgundy have more territory now than it used to? I feel like it has more land than it used to have in um, older versions of the uh, mod. Maybe I'm just wrong. 
we'll keep on deploying you guys here. Where do we even send the next army then? I mean, setting them down to Algeria makes sense. Um, setting them down maybe towards the German colonies also makes a little bit of sense. But it depends on it's like we're actually expecting conflict to realistically break out. And I'm hoping the answer is no. Naval base. I mean, actually, a lot of research bonuses. Why not? We'll expand Infi. Which is somewhere down here. Yeah, it's in this port right there. Make it a little bit better for us. I mean, we need more ports, obviously. An assassination attempt on Edward VIII. The national animal? Iberian unity has always been a rather dicey affair, especially in these turbulent times. While there are many who would use the instability to advance the cause of their own ethnic group, there are also plenty of loyal citizens who wish to keep our union intact. Artists, musicians, politicians, and even ordinary people have been known to come together to try and define a united Iberian culture. Usually these are mere blips on the radar, but sometimes something extraordinary comes from it. Like the shared conquistador of pride, or the fact that both the Portuguese and Spanish have a hatred for Moors. And sometimes, these attempts end in disaster. It all started uh, off as well at meaning collaboration between the Lisbon and Madrid art guilds in the hopes of producing a piece of art that symbolized the unity of Spain and Portugal. After some deliberation, the artists agreed that their project would consist of a giant mural displaying what they hoped to be Iberia's new national animal. Taking a Spanish bull and a Portuguese rooster as pieces for, of inspiration, the artist slaved away day and night to create a masterpiece. Unfortunately, when it was finally unveiled before a crowd two weeks later, the reactions were less than stellar. The, fin the finished project, which for some reason ended up being a mixed amalgamation of rooster and cow body parts, um, with uh, seven pairs of horns and at least three heads, and really earned the ire of the entire nation that they were trying to appeal to. Described by onlookers uh, variably as an abomination, a piece of vomit-inducing graffiti that wouldn't pass in American art school, and proof that Jesus died in vain. To make matters worse, the Iberian Chimera, as it had been now been dubbed, was uh, linked was leaked to the international community, where in many countries it seemed to be caught on immediately. Fortunately, in the grand scale of things, this doesn't uh, impact our nation too much, but the mental link between Iberia and the Eldrick Rooster Bull from hell in the minds of foreigners won't go away anytime soon. Can't thank you. Thank you for linking Iberia. With uh, a, a shitty bull drawing. <laughs> fantastic. I feel like I've said fantastic like a thousand times, but I do, um, do apologize for that. Invitation to Iberia. As a former member of the Triumvirate, the Candidos of the Union of Iberia, Francis Franco Barradi, and Antonio de Alaria Salazar are invited to the conference that will be held in the Abruge de Castile, Malta. Franco's name being put before his ears had already started a protocol crisis in the Portuguese government, though Cadillo Salazar was not personally concerned with this minor infraction. Iberia will be present at the conference. How do you how do you list two people? I guess you'd other than like not using their names at all, which would be my best guess for how to do it, but I'm not too too sure. Also, I do like that Corsica and uh, Sardinia are now just like one island. So you expand in feet. Let's get those research bonuses. Chiano gives the opening speech. Over the past few days, the delegates from around the triumphant had arrived. Tensions are high, and many attendees aren't exactly sure what the purpose of the conference is. Those questions, however, are set to be answered, as Duce Glizzano takes the stage. Honored delegates, he begins. We have gathered here today to put aside our differences and reaffirm the greatness of our alliance. I know many of you have disputes and issues to raise, and this is the place to do it. Many of the audience are, sh are shocked by the bluntness of his words, but there are a few smiles. At least he recognizes that this is going to be a complete shit show, murmurs one Turkish diplomat to another. Triumphance was forged in fire, Siano continues, and as the words fall back into chaos, and as the world falls back into chaos, we must be open and frank with one another if our alliance is to survive. We are like brothers, squabbling sometimes, but always united in purpose and bound by familiar love and common history. I now invite my brother from Turkey to take the stage. Does Turkey have a focus tree yet? No, not, not quite yet. I have a feeling like it's not going to work out so well because I think it's like scripted to not work out because Turkey and Italy so far every campaign have gone to war over uh over like um like Jordan and stuff the Levant Turkish speech as Siano steps down from the stage the Turkish bus uh Bursig Asprey and Turks walk forward and while the Turkish delegation responds with racist applause the rest of the del the rest of the delegation is rather muted I will not bore you with the bland pleasantries like the Duche. Turkey's hal uh, halted Italian is overcome with the directness of his words. Siano is right in one regard when he brings up our shared history. 
We have a history of disputed borders, he roars. The Turkish delegation responds with shouts and cheers, while the rest of the conference looks on sullenly. Many had expected such a response, but few were prepared for the directness of Bakbit's words. I'm not opposed to triumphant in and of itself, Turkey continued. The collective security it offers is a blessing in this tumultuous world, but if Turkey is to continue to remain a member, we must have our ancestral lands back. We are fed up with European domination and our sphere of influence. I look towards uh, the meeting with leaders of our alliance to discuss our disputed claims and uh, and the return to the rightful motherland of Turkey. The Turkish delegation practically leapt from their seats, slamming their feet on the ground and cheering. Well, to be fair, they do own like this part of Turkey. Like, they just own it. This area down here is a little bit more eh. But I feel, I feel like, you know, you own part of mainland, like, Asia Minor, which... And surprisingly, it's going to lead up to for, uh, lead up to a few conflicts. And maybe also Cyprus, I'm not too sure. Franco and Salazar's speech. After a dangerously inflammatory speech, it was time for the two Kalidos of Iberia to take the stage. The two walked together, rubbing shoulders in an attempt to follow formal protocol. So Azir spoke first. On our leaders, he began, we wish to see this triumph remain a united, just like our friend and ally, Burst Turks. And just like him, we have disputes of our own to solve. Disputes of our own to solve to solve. Franco picked up here. However, unlike him, we will not resort to threats and nationalist agitation. We seek a truly equal agreement for all parties of triumvirate. This is met by jeers and heckling from some in the audience. We are all partners in this great alliance. Remember, for whatever reason you are here, there is one more. There is one issue more important than uh, all the rest: the preservation of our Mediterranean Brotherhood, one and united. The two awkwardly looked. The two awkwardly took turns speaking uh, for around half an hour, and while they were met with polite applause from the audience, a few fair had dozed off by the end as they finished. I feel like two people trying to give a speech at the same time, unsurprisingly, is going to be like a little bit awkward to do. We do have 36% stability. Crippled sovereignty is like really hurting us. So Zero receives popularity boost. I think it's probably just like a genetic event. Over the past few weeks, something rather strange and interesting had happened that has rocked the relationship between the two Kalidos that have led Iberia. Antonio Salazier has received a large increase in popularity support recently, with some stories and gossip ex exhorting his virtues, including some foreign publications with that write up about Solzer and his work. On the other hand, the rumors about his colleague Franco and and his stumbles and failures have come to light, damaging his standing among the populace. It seems rather strange and too convenient for Salazar to receive a sudden boost in support, and Franco is simultaneously uh, diminishing in his popularity. The presidents both have taken great pains to be seen as equalists in the past. So this must be the work of foreign intelligence service, seeking to sow division between the two Kalidos and fracturing Iberian unity. So right now, how is popularity looking? Um, it looks like the Italian dude is now, yeah, he's currently in charge. Not that I think it makes too much of a of a difference here. I mean, he gives us he gets great influence. I guess he gives us some, uh, some bonuses for himself. I mean, what's next? What's he give us? Resource gain, construction speed, factory repair. I mean, most of that's kind of like not super useful. Opening of the canal conference. A major point of contention among the delegates is the Suez Canal. Transfer the Italian control following their victory in Egypt. They had held sole authority over transit over the cana uh, canal since then. Forcing other triumvirate members to pay dues just like any other country outside the alliance. Iberia especially had long wanted access to the canal, as they lacked the ground presence in Turkey. Uh, as they lacked the ground presence of Turkey in the region. Italian Iberian delegates, with observers from other triumvirate member states, have gathered in opulent ballroom to discuss access to the canal. Is there anything we can spend this um, command power on? Let's just go with, like defensive. All that by organization. Can't upgrade you right now. Apparently your Desert Fox was actually like not that great. Let's actually go for like a guy with really, really high attack stats. Just in case we ever need to invade France. Again, I don't know when that would happen or if it'll ever happen. Because I know we know Burgundy basically at some point is going to um, invade France. It's going to happen, right? I don't know if we can like try to demand any territory. I doubt it. I bring demands. In the first negotiation session, Iberian diplomats Fern uh, Fernando Maria Castilla Ya Morez demand Iberia had ill access to the canal. Deliberations continued for hours until finally the Spaniard slammed his hand on the table. You've held the canal for, f for damn too long, he yelled. Why the hell should we, your ally, be forced to pay to use it? We'll even give you one lump sum of aid money if you give us unlimited access. That is my final offer. You can take it or leave it. So yeah, no, they don't seem uh, particularly happy. 
but the, the current way that things are going, which is, I guess, not a huge surprise. Okay, so we've connected the islands. Let's go for Hassan's paycheck. Apparently, oh, apparently this actually just decreases opinion with whoever currently has the most influence, which I guess actually kind of makes sense. Um, but I do think it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks everybody for watching. My name is Anthony. If you've enjoyed, my thumbs up. Now, if you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.